So I grew up in um, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I don't know if any of you have football fans, but the uh, Bengals are 8 right now, which is totally unbelievable. Um, um, I went to uh, the University of Cincinnati. I got my um, uh, Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering. And I chose um, UC because that's a really cool uh, cooperative education program. And it's sort of like an internship with like steroids. So you get like uh, a year and a half of uh, basic engineering courses, and then you start working out in the industry. So you rotate each quarter, uh, we were on quarter of the semester, so you're out in the industry working, applying what you learn, um, the previous academic quarter, and you're back in classes. So at the end of the program, um, you basically have three years of coursework and two years of actual on the job experience. Um, I worked at a really cool company called Epicon Media Surgery. Um, Epicon is a Johnson & Johnson company. And they specialize in sort of laparoscopic surgery, so um, it's where they put some ports in your stomach and inflate it, fill with gas, and they put some cameras in there, and then they can stick devices through those ports. So the port, that's, that's a picture of the port right there, it's called a trocar. Um, you might get laparoscopic surgery if you like gastric bypass surgery. Um, I believe they can do some other things like breathing with the gallbladder with those ports. So they make a suite of devices that um, are used in laparoscopic surgery. So the device right here is a surgical stapler. So um, staples and cuts tissue. And then over here is um, an advanced energy device. So it uses um, ultrasonic energy to seal and cut tissue. So I got a lot of great experience from those two years at Epicon. Um, but more importantly, I made some great contacts. I feel really strongly about cooperative education, and that's one of the reasons I'm here. It also led to um, my next two jobs. Um, I spent two years at a company called Interflex Medical, working on uh, stem delivery devices, um, and working on making the actual catheter, which is a little flexible piece here. Um, and then through the same contacts I made at that con, um, I was right off the cadence um, about three years ago. So does anyone, is anyone familiar with games or heard of specialty blades? Okay, so those of you who don't, um, specialty blades started in 1985 um, in downtown Santa Virginia. Um, in the mid, I'd say the mid-90s, the medical device industry started kind of calling on their edge generation techniques and their um, uh, piercing technologies. Um, that part of the business really took off. We, in 2005, actually, I think the medical device side of the company um, surpassed the industrial side, and we changed the name to Cadence. And today, um, we actually have six locations, 450 employees, and six employees. It's pretty incredible. Um, Staten, Virginia is the headquarters. We work on basically the edges, um, a lot of laser welding. Um, complex assemblies, our transfer right out of the facility works on needles and tubes. Um, Surgeon Bay, Wisconsin, um, they're pretty primarily based on stamping, so shaping metal components. Um, uh, Massachusetts and the Dominican Republic, we do a lot of injection molding, so there's parts that we make in Rhode Island and Stanton, and then we put plastic on them in these other locations. And then PA, we do uh, finished device assembly and cleaner. So I said before, um, you know, Cadence is kind of focused on advanced surgical. So the medical device industry is kind of large. You know, on the one side, you've got um, capital equipment like an MRI machine. On the other side, you've got just basic surgical tools. Um, they're kind of in the middle. So devices for the arthroscopic surgery, we also described them earlier. Um, some devices for um, arthroscopic surgery, so if you have shoulder, shoulder surgery, knee surgery. Um, we make this advanced energy devices. But it's all things of that nature. So our marketing department is pretty excellent. Uh, they make some really great videos, so we'll probably uh, this will probably give you a better insight into uh, what kids is all about. That others cannot build processes that others will not and deliver outcomes that simply make the world work better. Together with our customers, employees, and shareholders. We provide advanced products using science and sound engineering to make an impact that matters. 
At Cadence, we understand product development. We guide our customers from rapid prototyping through product launch. We are vertically integrated and focused on advanced manufacturing technologies. We use the latest technologies, such as 3D printing, CNC simulations, and solid modeling to execute real rapid prototyping. We also use some processes that require no tooling, like EDM and laser cutting, to yield new parts faster. Our design engineering assistance is focused on helping you design a better product, both for manufacturing and improved product performance. We have also created two centers of excellence. Our incision lab helps design engineers develop new shops, such as specialty blades and custom needles. Our deep knowledge and years of experience around cutting and piercing applications enables novel new products. Our fully dedicated advanced welding lab integrates basic and complex welding capabilities into the unique business process. Our precision metal stamping machines use coil processing methods to satisfy high demand. Along with our multi-slide stamping capabilities, we are able to efficiently create products requiring complex stamped components. We offer plastic injection molding in four of our six locations as an integrated part of our complex sub-assembly processes, including insert molding, two-shot molding, and new cell molding. At Cadence, we created custom Swiss machining and micro-machining capabilities to enable unique solutions for our customers. Our precision machining capabilities are optimized for high-precision automated manufacturing. We are an engineering company at heart. With more than 60 engineers on our team, we are able to offer more complete technical solutions. Many of the advanced manufacturing processes that we use are developed internally by our engineers. We are the specialty blade and custom needle experts. We develop proprietary CNC sharpening processes that feature precisely controlled, multi-step grinding and honing sequences. We have a comprehensive collection of tube fabrication capabilities, including laser Swiss machining that combines six axis Swiss machining and laser cutting in one process. Cadence's product realization center is where we perform final clean room assembly and sterilization management. Our team has years of experience working for medical device OEMs and understands that flawless execution is critical for being a trusted contract manufacturer. Our certified quality systems ensure that our customers minimize risk in the final and critical stage of product realization. With more than three decades of manufacturing excellence, we continue to improve outcomes and product performance by developing what others deem impossible. At Cadence, we make what matters to you better. So what do I do at Cadence? <coughs> in the research and development group, um, I would say it's more, I guess, more emphasis on development. We basically get the projects um, that are very large in size or complexity that uh, wouldn't fit on existing assets. So it's new technology, um, a lot of development. Um, so it's very hands-on. I'm out on the floor working on equipment, or I'm out of supply working on a machine, um, or designing some, some piece of automation or equipment. Um, it's a team environment. Um, I use a lot of different um, STEM type uh, coursework. Um, so the way a project typically works is we'll get linked up with uh, an engineering group um, from our customer on our customer side. So between um, them and us, we'll develop some product requirements. Um, and from that, we'll develop a manufacturing strategy of how we think we can make the product. Um, again, this is probably one of something that we don't currently have. So we do what's called like proof of principles of prototyping. And then at the end of that, we would measure parts. Sometimes it doesn't work out, we don't meet the requirements, so we start back all over again. If it does meet the requirements, then we go into design and develop the case and actually build the production um, manufacturing itself. Once that's um, complete, 
Um, we then run a bunch of parts. Uh, I have built a statistical to prove that those parts will meet whatever requirements are laid out in the beginning. Um, once we've done that, then we transfer that whole program to operations and they there on that um, from that point forward. Um, so I've I've been there for three years and most of my time has been uh, working on devices like um, North Peak Shaper, which are these devices right here. So you know if you ever had um, you know shoulder surgery, what they do is they fill up um, the joint with saline and they stick an endoscope in there and they stick uh, one of the orthopedic shapers in there and touch up on some soft tissue. Tendon or this, this, something like that. But it's pretty, um, these are really complex parts. So, um, to get an idea of what it takes to make something like an orthopedic shaver, you would be you know, implementing things like injection molding, you know, laser welding, laser cutting, um, precision grinding, switch turning, you know, multi axis machining, um, there would be some heat treatment, there would be some chemical processing, probably some coatings. Um, and then you have to be able to, you know, figure out a way to transfer the parts throughout the entire cell. Um, and then sometimes the hardest thing is just figuring out how to measure it. Because these things are, are uh, so small and so precise that a lot of times there's not off the shelf measurement capability out there, you have to fill it yourself. So as you can imagine, I use um, lots of math and physics from school. Um, uh, chemistry, you know, we're, we're looking at Material science, you know, what happens when we treat a part and creating, uh, you know, market site. Um, you know, we have a lot of cleaning electro polish systems that, you know, we have to maintain this chemistry is pretty, uh, to a pretty high degree. Um, we do lots of programming in G code, you know, use um, control loops, things like that, circuits. Uh, some of the things that, you know, aren't really stimulated, you know, we have to English, um, making presentations, reports, video presentations. And then believe it or not, a lot of the creative classes like arts, ceramics, um, shop class like really help a lot with different designing and forming functions are very important. You kind of go hand in hand. Um, so, you know, why are we here? We're basically here to try to you know connect um, the industry to the student, kind of like what I was talking about earlier with cooperative education. Um, I think you know we can do that um, through some of the things we talked about tonight. Um, you know, job shadowing, doing some tours and cadence, um, and maybe working on some projects, mentoring, things of that nature. Um, but I think um, to really spark interest in the students, you know, kind of give them um, some ideas of engineering principles, we probably have to do a little bit more. Um, you know, problem solving skills are kind of fundamental to engineering. It's kind of really what engineering is, being able to solve a problem. And I was kind of thinking about what are the things I do every day. I work with CNC machines, or a lot of robots, um, automation lasers. These things all have kind of a common thread, and that's that they all kind of run on the same type of program or controller. And I was thinking, oh, it's kind of like a microcontroller, um, kind of like an Arduino. Um, right? Is anyone here familiar with an Arduino? Do you guys use these in class? Or? We, want, we just had a set. Yeah, really right, cool. So I, I uh, made some kits up here. Um, I'll try this video one more time, and if it doesn't work, we'll just we'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> projects I've made. Due to its popularity and ease of use, it's one of our favorite microcontrollers. In fact, we dedicated an entire issue to it. But if you're not even sure what a microcontroller is, this video has you covered. A microcontroller is a circuit board that has a chip on it that can be programmed to do many different things. You can read information from sensors, for instance, if you want the board to read how bright it is in a room, you can use this photoresistor which is sensitive to light. Or you can detect when someone walks into a room with this motion sensor. Even this GPS receiver is a sensor. It tells your project where on the globe it is. Now, that's just a small sample of the different kinds of input that sensors provide, but what can you do with that data? Using output, you can control devices or display and store data. 
For instance, you can have your Arduino simply blink an LED like this. For something a bit more useful, you can hook it up to this product, called the power switch tail. It lets you control the power to your AC devices, like your lamps and appliances. This LCD readout will let your Arduino display text information. And you can also have sensor values go right into your computer for storing or processing. We're just scratching the surface of the different inputs and outputs that we can use with the Arduino. There's just way too much out there to cover in a single video. But let's take a look at how an Arduino can play a role in a basic project. Let's say you want your living room lights to turn off when you press play on your DVR or DVD player's remote so that you can enjoy your movie in the dark automatically. To make this happen, we'll need a sensor that can read the light that comes out of the remote control. It looks like this, and it's called an infrared sensor. And how do we turn off the lights? We use the power switch tail I mentioned before. It plugs into your wall, and you plug your lamp into it. This wire is what we'll use to control the power switch inside. So how do these work together? Well, that's where the Arduino comes in. We'll hook both of them up to the Arduino pins and write some code to upload to the board using free software. In a very basic overview, the code that we upload to the Arduino will be checking to see if the sensor has received any pulses of infrared light from the remote. If the pattern of flashes matches the pattern of flashes we know to be for play, the Arduino will send the signal to the power switch tail to cut the power to the lamps. We could then enhance this project so that when we hit stop or pause, the lights turn back on. It's just a matter of updating the code and uploading it to the board. You can reprogram these boards over and over again. There's so much you can do with the Arduino, it's kind of incredible. I used infrared for my Enough Already project, which listened to the closed captioning track from the TV and would mute the TV whenever someone was mentioned that I didn't want to hear about. Here are a few other ideas of cool things you can do with the Arduino. Randy Serafan created the lunchtime clock, which speeds up slightly right before noon, slows down between 12 and 1, and then speeds up again, giving you 12 extra minutes of lunch every day. Steve Hofer's secret knock gumball machine was featured in Make Volume 25. It's a lot like a regular gumball machine, except that instead of a quarter, you need to know the secret knock to get a gumball out. The Arduino also lets you take your projects online. Even your cat can start tweeting with the Kitty Tweety project from when your cat plays with a little toy, the device tweets. The project can be found in Make Volume 22. And who doesn't love a robot? Arduino can help you make your own. It acts like the brains of your bot. But what if you want to use your brain to control the bot? Check out this mind-controlled Arduino robot from Taro and Kimo Carvina. It can be found in our book, Arduino Bots and Gadgets. So that's just a small sample of what you can do with an Arduino. My best advice to you is to jump right in and start playing around. The Maker Shed offers these great getting started with Arduino kits that have everything you need to start exploring the possibilities. And if you're looking for inspiration, it's not far. Alright, so I'm glad to hear that a lot of you guys are familiar with Arduino. Um, What's great about them is they're open source, so there's a lot of great um, examples online. There's even some forums where the teachers like you are trying to implement them in class. Um, it doesn't take a lot to get started. You know, $24 you Arduino know, board. Um, you download the free software and, and just some free time. Um, I think a lot of people are a little bit intimidated because they can get kind of complex, um, but you can start off pretty simple. Uh, I think they showed in the video where they're just basically blinking an LED, and, and it's it's so um, so well documented that you. It basically just has to follow the direction of some step by step. Mm -hmm. um, but I did create a couple of uh, um, examples here. Um, <clears throat> pass these around. So I, I did all four of these projects last night, about three hours, and it wasn't too difficult. Um, but the first one I have is kind of just a light here. <coughs> so you can feel sort of imagine, you know, Kind of like the, uh, the video that you did. If the, if the room was getting you know, too bright, you could uh, have to shave that on three clothes or something like that. Or maybe you could just, um, maybe you're just teaching and you just want to show you know, how sensors work. You could you know, show them how you wire together and kind of explain the actual principles of how it operates. If you can pass this around, you can get it close to the, the candle or your camera, you can see the, uh, the light level change. So these things are pretty robust. Um, uh, 
next one I have is uh, kind of a, it's a sound visualizer. So it's got a microphone on it, and uh, mainly, <coughs> and as I talk, you know, the louder you talk, um, the more it displays. Um, these little uh, e wave displays are awesome. You can you know have them scroll words across it, you know, you can make games out of them. Um, just wanted to give you a quick example of this. Across the circle. So I built a, a third example um, with a sound shield. Um, so are some, they sell basically shields that you can plug right into the Arduino that have done a lot of the engineering and wiring for you. Um, so you can basically turn this into like a little MP3 player. It's got a uh, scan disk part, put your wave files on there. But what I did was I put um, a microphone on it. As you talk into it, it's a voice changer. And my absolute favorite, um, my favorite, my absolute favorite is the Zumba robot. Zumba robot. So basically, the robot's the shield. Your Arduino's on top. It's really cool because it's got uh, two little micro gear metal letters in it. It's got an accelerometer, <coughs> and it's got two little sensors on the bottom. Um, so basically, you can kind of pull a line. <coughs> so, so the first thing it does is it kind of calibrates itself, make sure it's new. So, um, just to kind of give an example of how easy some of this stuff is, this is the example of the um, audio visualizer. So, you know, there's some great resources like Adafruit. Um, so, basically, this is, I basically just took this project off of her website exactly. Um, so, she gives you a great overview of what you need, so she'll lay out um, you, know, you need this microphone, this is how you wire it, this is what it looks like. Let's make sure that works, so you just copy and paste the code, and then you add <coughs> the visualizer. So, you know, a lot of the stuff, because it is open source, is really well documented. There's a lot of great resources online. I bought all the parts for this <coughs> off of this Adafruit website.
So it's just showing you like the sense of this thing as it gets close to the size of it. Information um, is available, and you know, let me know if um, I can help you. 